You know, <laughs> need to detail that right there. We, we actually are. We're going to polish this old uh, lacquer or wood. You're going to do the, you're going to do the water ski. Yeah, we're going to polish water ski. All right, awesome. You know, hey. Hello out there in internet land. I'd like to really quickly thank you for joining another episode of your detailing classes that we do online every week, every Wednesday, same time, same bat channel, uh, different topics though. And like always, if you have an idea for one of these videos, put it in the comments down below so that way they will read it and uh, hopefully we make a video out of it because we like doing what you do. So what we all right this is not your typical car this is a, a big truck you are not known for trucks no i hate or, like newer trucks let's yeah. put it that way Th this has the all too common problem of dealership damage uh, before the owner took possession of the car and it's really common and one of the primary reasons is because at the dealership they're really there to get you into the cubicle and get you to sign yeah, on the sign dotted the papers, line yeah they yeah, want to make their money that is really the big picture what a dealership is about uh, they're good at taking it back in for maintenance, oil changes, you know, service work. But when it comes to appearance, the detailing, they usually have the, the smallest budget, no trained people, no good products, no good tools, and then you get damaged. Oh, you mean that like that factory installed ceramic coating is, is, is an amazing process? <laughs> well, we got some high spots on here to show you how, yeah, wait how till amazing you see this uh, is. dealership installed. It's extra thick coating. The problem is it doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, so basically what... You're going to go over like the, what to look for when you drop your car off or when you're picking a brand All new car of, up very, and stuff yep. and how to fix these things. Yep. All right. Awesome. So with that being said, do you have any other things? No, not right now. Stay tuned to the very end for a message though. Oh, oh cliffhanger. All right. You go there. I go here. And let's get this show on the road. Okay, so this is a brand new uh, GMC Denali Ultimate. It's a very high-end truck. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the color is called, but it's a dark gray metallic. Anyway, the owner uh, was referred to me and asked me if I'd take a look at it, and I did. And uh, luckily for us, it was sunny outside. And so the first thing I noticed was there were holograms on the side of both beds. Now, uh, look, I use rotary polishers with wool pads all the time. Nothing wrong with them. Just don't finish with them because it leaves holograms. Uh, so that's the first thing I noticed. Then the owner actually started pointing out high spots, which were a little harder to see because the sun was overhead and not shining on the side of the car. But that's where a swirl finder light comes in. There's high spots everywhere on this thing. So that means whoever put the coating on at the dealership, they, uh, they probably didn't own a good light like this or they were in a hurry. But um, for some reason, there's high spots everywhere. Or a combination of both. The tail lights are completely filled full of swirls and scratches. And see, the interesting thing to me about that is, is the paint surrounding them, although there are holograms and high spots, you know, whatever you would do to put scratches into here, you probably would have done here and here and there and there, but it's not like that. But uh, the both tail lights were totally trashed. And uh, let's see, the other things I think I found wrong with this car, that's primarily it. Then just some random, what we call RIDS. Random, isolated, deeper scratches is what RIDS stands for. And there was a number of those back here in the tailgate and just random places. And I took all those out with the rotary, then finish up with an orbital uh, with a foam pad. But anyway, th these are the things that, you know, upon buying this brand new truck and getting home, usually you'd be really excited. Wow, look at my new truck. And then you're looking at it and going, uh, it needs to be detailed. <laughs> oh, look at my new truck. And it's brand new. So, uh, so in this class, we're going to talk about how we're going to fix these things, you know, remove high spots, remove holograms, and then how to protect the paint moving forward. But also, we want to talk about some things that you should do if you're going to be that person that's going to go down and buy a brand new car or order a brand new car to be delivered, you know, assembled and delivered. And the first thing you want to do, though, is you want to talk to uh, your sales rep or the service manager, and you want to let them know that when that car arrives, do not wash it. Do not detail it. Do not wash it. Do not Don't touch it. Don't give me the courtesy wipe down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, a lot of the larger dealerships, they got what we call a swirl-o-matic car wash, an automatic car wash with the spinning brushes or the soft mops or the spinning mops. And the Those are the beaters, with, man. Do you hear them? Yeah, the <laughs> problem with these things is they, um, they put scratches in the paint. And if, you know, look, if you've got a ceramic coating on your car, they're going to scratch through the coating and scratch the paint. So you just really don't want them to wash your car. That's the first thing. You know, I know that their heart is in the right place. You know, it's a noble idea. Hey, Yancey's coming down to pick up his brand new charger. 
you guys get that thing washed up. But it'd be really be better if they didn't wash it and you take control of the wash process. And then, of course, wash it carefully by hand to avoid swirls and scratches. Preach uh, it! Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing about this is, you know, you really have to stress this to these people because here's why. At most new car dealerships, it's, it's what they call a knee-jerk reaction. You know, it's like when a doctor taps you with the rubber hammer in your knee and your leg kicks out. I don't know if anybody's ever done that in a doctor's office. They haven't done that to me for years, but as a kid, they would tap your knee and it would kick out. It's called a knee-jerk response. Well, the knee-jerk response at a dealership is new car, wash it. You bring your car in for service, they wash it. They just wash it no matter what. So you really have to look the person in the eye and go, look, do not wash my car. And companies like Dr. Beasley's, we actually have hang tags you can get. And it says right on there, do not wash. And um, it's just important to stress this because otherwise you're gonna wash it. And uh, years ago, I detailed this gentleman's brand new black Mercedes Benz and ceramic coated it. A couple months later, I'm looking at it and it's all scratched up. And I would go, what'd you do? It goes, well, I took it in to have the oil changed. <laughs> oh, well, well they, they, they washed it for them and they undid all my hard work with one wash job. So, so nice of the dealership to do that. And it, it is important. And also, you know, there's two things that happen when work is done incorrectly. For example, whatever was going on with the side of this truck bed that they felt compelled to buff it and leave holograms in there, that process took off paint. For me to come back and fix it is gonna take off a little paint. And we all know that the factory clear coat is super thin to start with. So all this was is really just wasted paint because it didn't have to be like that. The, the, the dealership, instead of handing their guys cheap, you know, this isn't a cheap rotary, but going down to Harbor Freight and buying a cheap rotary and telling people to detail cars with it, you know, get an orbital polisher. You can do much of the same work with an orbital and not put the holograms in. Agreed. So that's the first thing. You want to talk to them and let them know when the car arrives, do not wash it. Uh, the next thing is, is you want to inspect the car when it arrives. And here are some of the top 10 things that you want to look for. So one is scratches in the paint. Now, probably a lot of people buying a new car don't have a little tool like this. It's called a, this one I think Lake Country actually calls it the handheld light. But in the industry, we call it a swirl finder light. If you don't have one of these, this is $100 retail. When you go down to look at your new car, it's really hard to see what's going on. You need the light so you can inspect it. And oh, really God, I can see that from over here. I didn't even have to bring the camera in. <laughs> <laughs> and really get a good idea for what's going on with the finish. And without the light, you're not going to be able to tell. So then you're going to take the car home, and then you bring it back. They can go, well, when it left here, it met your approval. You know, you should have pointed this out before you left. Well, you can't point it out if you can't see it. So invest in a $100 light, especially if you're going to detail your own car. You need one anyway. I mean, if you don't, you, uh, uh, your, your phone will show it, but that type of light actually makes it easier. That's right. The flashlight on the phone can show it, but this light will really light up the paint. Uh, so you look for scratches, uh, any kind of paint defects, uh, holograms, you know, just anything that is in there because a brand new paint job should look brand new. It shouldn't have any problems at all. The next thing I would look for, um, which kind of falls into the category of scratches, would be holograms or micromarring. Now, holograms are a specific scratch pattern inflicted by a rotary only. Orbitals, you know, porter cables, tools like this, they don't put in holograms, they put in micromarring. So look to see if it has holograms from the misuse of a rotary, or look to see if it's got holograms from the use of an orbital with um, sub-quality abrasive technology. So not all abrasive technology is good. A lot of the stuff on the market that I've tested just by itself scratches paint. You know, so if a dealer is buying a cheap compound polish or cleaner wax and buffing this with a foam pad and an orbital, which is a safe tool and a safe pad, the abrasive technology can be leaving micromarring and you're not gonna see it without a good light, especially on lighter colors, okay? And the only way to fix holograms and micromarring is to completely repolish the entire car over again. So it's a lot of work. So look for that before you take the car, take delivery of the car. Uh, then you also look for wheel and tire rash. Um, this, this car here, this truck here, there's a couple places it looks like the tires were curbed, but not the rims. But I have seen brand new cars where they got a little, were damaged to the rim itself, okay, from somebody bark, parking it too close to a concrete curb. And wheels nowadays are really expensive. And, you know, tires are cosmetical. If you, if you get curb rash on those, it's not going to look good. It probably won't hurt the performance of the tire. But you want to inspect for uh, tire and wheel rash. You want to add anything to that, Yancey? 
No, no? It's, yeah, and missing rubber. <laughs> okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to look for overspray or any kind of surface contamination. Now, in order to do this, you really need to be packing a little detail kit, but you would take, you know, a, this is a uh, wireless wash, a uh, prep spray, and um, a clean microfiber towel, and of course you'd want to clean the section, and hopefully they uh, won't challenge you on this. I've never done this, but this is what I would do. Then you want to do the baggie test, okay? Take the sandwich baggie and then just lightly fill that area you clean. And you should usually test places like the hood, the roof of the trunk lid, the horizontal surfaces where things in the air, overspray paint land on and then bond to the paint. And you know, look, it's possible to buy a brand new car and have it be horribly contaminated. Okay, so now think about it. Uh, in your hometown, when you drive around, you see all the new car dealership lots. All the cars are parked outside, usually by a heavy uh, traffic road. So they have what's called traffic pollution. So every time someone hits their brakes, you got brake dust coming off the rotors and the pads. Tires are wearing down, you got rubber dust, you got exhaust fuel, you got dirt in the air, you got just normal industrial air pollution, and it's all landing on these cars as they sit there waiting for you to come by and buy one. They usually have what they call a lot car wash, you know, that they farm this out to, and these guys come by like in a little mini truck with a pressure washer, and they just blast all the cars. Really, they don't really hit them in the mist, they just blast them, but sometimes they wash them, and again, if their mitts are contaminated, they're scratching them up. But anyway, back to the overspray. These cars are sitting outside, and chances are they're gonna be contaminated. Not a big deal, but it means when you get your brand new car, you gotta wash it, clay it, and then polish it, and wax it. So those are things just to consider. Um, over here, uh, Yancey uh, told me to check mileage, and mileage is something you can't check. That just means they took your car out for a road, <laughs> road trip, uh, but that shouldn't have too much to do with the appearance of it unless they damaged it while they're out driving it. And then stained plastic trim. So this truck here has these huge plastic fairings, fair, flares around the fenders, and on the passenger side, there's one area where the plastic is actually white. So whatever they were using to compound or polish the side of the bed, they got it onto the trim. And the problem with that is, and I got this all taped off, but uh, the, the term for this is called pebble textured plastic trim. And if you look at it, it has a, like a pebble texture, it's ingrained. And what happens when you get a compound or a polish in there is it impacts into the little tiny crevices and it can be almost impossible to get out 100%. And so, so now for the rest of your lives, you own the car, that trim is stained. Of course you can buy products like Solution Finish that will re-dye it and then put a dressing over it and that'll band-aid, it'll fix it, but you shouldn't have to fix a brand new car. They should have been like me. If they're going to buff it out, tape it off and protect the trim. It takes minutes to tape off trim. It takes, uh, well, a lifetime of looking at ugly stain trim. Um, Tagua. So does everybody out there know what Tagua is? T-O-G-W? Tagua is a term I coined years ago, and it stands for the other guy's wax. So a lot of times when I'm detailing cars, I, I find compound polish and wax or sealant stuck into the emblems and around trim or on trim. I didn't put it there, but if I'm detailing the car, when the owner picks it up, he's not gonna know that I didn't put it there. He'll think I put it there because now he's seeing it. So not only do I gotta remove all my splatter, I gotta remove the other guy's splatter, or the other guy's wax, so it's called Tagua. So that's something else I would look for. So in case something happened to the car during, from the time it left the assembly line to the time it got to the dealer's showroom floor, if they've had to do any work inside all the cracks and crevices around emblems, be looking for wax or compound or polished splatter. Let's see, the other thing on my list is coating high spots. <laughs> this um, one has it. Here, let me yeah, get the... This, this is crazy. I, t I took my crayon. Here, let me show my little crayon trick. This is, uh, I call the crayon hack. And I, I wish I didn't have to use the crayon hack, but so many people bring me cars that just have defects everywhere. And let's look at the, uh, tell me if I'm holding the, the hole. Come up a little bit. Right there. You can see it right on the gas. You can see where they wiped it. And it's everywhere you see a circle is is uh, coating high spots. Yeah. Big, old, big old line of coating high spots. And um, so what I do when I inspect a car that's got a lot of damage, what I do is I take one of the uh, big old fatty crayons out of here and I grab my light and I go around and I just carefully don't push hard but just mark everything. And the reason for that is, is so when I come back I know not to miss it because 
There's nothing like detailing a whole car and then inspecting and go, ah, oh, crap, I missed some stuff. So pre-mark all the defects if you want to make sure you get them out 100%. And of course, with the crayon crayons, you get different colors. Like I had a yellow Cuda in here with DA sanding marks everywhere. So I took a black crayon and circled all those. I had a blue 1960 Volkswagen bus, same thing. DA sanding marks everywhere. So I just went through and marked them all, but that's called the crayon hack. Uh, let's see, what else do I got on my board here? Oh, oh. The, the notorious one that they're for. Oh, this is horrible. And dealerships are notorious for this. They put this greasy, slimy, silicone, oily, tire dressing on your tires and your engine bay because it makes it look black but now you're the person that's got to try to get that crap off there and then sometimes they put it on the engine bay and i tell you if i bought a brand new car and someone took one of them aerosols you know plastic trimmer stores and sprayed that all over the place i'd be pissed because it was perfectly fine the way it was and when you add that to an engine compartment it's usually sticky so now it becomes a dust magnet and when you do go to clean it, it's going to be difficult and take longer because you got this greasy film holding all the dirt onto the engine so look at the tires and and uh, look at the engine compartment and also the trim you know there's some good trimmer stores out there and, and uh, dressings uh, but again a lot of times dealerships um, they just buy the cheapest stuff and just wipe it on the trim wipe it on the tires spray the engine compartment and now your car's all jacked up when 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 i years ago when i worked for mcguire's one of my up in oregon one of my primary jobs was to call on body shops dealerships and detail shops and here's how I've always explained to people I loved calling on body shops you know why because the guys in the body shops are usually true professionals and if you can show them a product that'll let them do their job faster with better results maybe even cost less money they're listen they're willing to listen they're willing to learn but what I found out about calling on detail shops is a lot of times and this is back before the internet when I was doing this but a lot of times these guys are self-taught they learned everything through trial and error and you show up and say hey I can show you some cool products so they built this wall around them so they're sometimes they're hard to get into that door of uh, you know the ego and then dealerships I never like to call on dealerships because dealerships all they want is stuff that's cheap in bulk bottom bulk gallons line. five gallons 50, 55 gallon drum of tire dressing you know cheap and and that's their mentality and then the next guy that comes along and has something cheaper they, they're not even brand loyal they'll switch to that so that's kind of the problem with uh, uh, the whole greasy tire thing is is dealerships who want stuff that's really cheap and and that's what you get. So you got to tell them, don't put that stuff on my car. You know? Use that little hang tag, people. Yeah, remember to use the hang tag. Anyway, Yancey, I think that's all I got. Oh, um, what's that last one I put on there? Dark. I had something else about there. Dark. Yeah, I was trying to decipher what you had on the board. And I, I had a note there for something. Looks like Dan to no, me, but if you're no, saying it's, it's dark. dark. I'll think of it as we're moving around here. Anyway, so this, this car has, it's got swirls in the plastic that need to come out. It's got high spots and it's got holograms on the paint and all these. Run your light down the side because I can, I can see it from here. Oh, yeah. Now just go down the side. I mean, just look at how bad this is, people. The holograms and yes. actually they go all the way to here. They're oh, not no, as, I, I got them. I did. Yeah, they're <laughs> not as bad down here, but they're pretty bad down there. And uh, anyway, so I've already detailed this entire truck except for this side of the bed. So I've already nailed everything. So that means I've also done test spots and dialed in what it takes. And so what it took was the NSP 150 to pull out the holograms of the foam cutting pad on a powerful gear driven orbital. Then I think I did a finished polish with 95 and a polishing pad and then it's ready to coat. The tail lights, the plastics actually was pretty hard on this. At least that of the scratches are deep because uh, usually tail lights <laughs> clean up pretty easily. But I found myself taking the blue foam cutting pad, the beast, and I was pushing on that thing and buffing for a while to get those scratches out. So I fixed the other one. I haven't fixed this one here yet. And then the coating high spots. So coatings, I don't have no idea what they put on here, but a polish with a foam polishing pad removed 100% of it. So, so it wasn't that, that, wasn't that strong. So, well, sometimes you hear about some coatings, the only way to remove is a sand off. So at least that one is not this bad. And, you would uh, know about that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, I've that. left high spots before. And uh, you know, usually where I leave them, Yancey, is the little curves around the door handles, the little Agreed. indents. Yeah, a lot of times I come back out the next day and I find it, you know, I didn't quite wipe into the tight areas. The big area is pretty good, but the tight areas, intricate areas, a lot of times you see it looks like Paul spider and you go to wipe and it don't come off. It's a coating high spot. <laughs> so, uh, but that uh, comes back to having a great light and then, of course, taking your time. The problem with myself and a lot of detailers is when you get to the coating part, you probably got a full day of work into it and you're tired. You're tired. You, you just want to get done. Then you rush. So, 
Uh, if you can, uh, rest up before you put the coating on. Okay, so you wanna, want me to kind of just demonstrate how I'd fix some of these? Sure, things? let's go to this cam right here and let's, let's do this, shall we? Let me, let me grab a piece of tape. <clears throat> that way we can see a before and after for the holograms. And holograms, um, there's actually an acronym for this. It's called DISO, the Dealer Installed <laughs> Swirl Option. You if you're a dealer asked, watching this, we're sorry. We're not really picking on you, but we are. <laughs> okay. You never, you never asked for it, but you got it anyway. Okay. Tell you what. I'll just put a piece of tape right here, and I'm going to show you. So there's holograms all through here, and then here are coding high spots. Can you see those? Yeah, I'm coming in. Hold on. Oh yeah, right there. All right along there. And then look at the, can, can you see the swirls in the plastic? Oh yeah. Okay, oh, so yeah. here we got plastic scratches, we got coating high spots, and we've got holograms. So let me go ahead and fire up the beast. And grab some NSP-150. You know, I have these squeeze bottles up here. Uh, Dr. Beasley's is, uh, we do as much as we can to be a green company. And so one of the things we've done, we're going completely away from our packaging of, of uh, plastic tubes to pouches, to bags. And they collapse, they don't fill up landfills, they disintegrate faster. Okay, Yancey, I'm gonna move this just a little bit. Oh, you're moving the set now, Army. All right, which side are you going on? I'm gonna get on this side so you can be over there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put a little over here too. Again, I'm going to have to work on this because I think those scratches are pretty deep. Uh, someone just, by the way, called me up and asked me, Mike, what speed do you use the beast on? <laughs> so I was always on the six. Okay. And I'm going to jump over here and do a little polishing on the plastic. And notice how I get no pad stalling. That's one of the reasons I like this. Gear driven, I can push hard, I can abrade fast, I can get the job done quick. Let's wipe that off and check it out. Here's your light. Thank you, Spanky. Okay. <laughs> Can you pick up the holograms? We'll start with the ugly first. Uh, go down, uh, like when you're shining up, it shows better. And move the light away from the paint a little bit. There you go. Okay. Now go across towards me, towards me. Nope, that's oh. away from me. There you go, that's bad. Okay, there's <laughs> the bad. And go to the good. And there's the good. And I can't see what that looks like from your point of view. Does that look good? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, totally clear. Now you can see that metal flake, it's a popping, as people like to say. And that's from our NSP 150. That's not even a finishing polish. Now let's check out the plastic. I still got some work to do on plastic, but a huge difference huge freaking difference and all the high spots are gone okay so anyway you know look it's it's not a catastrophe when a dealership jacks up your car it can be fixed but you know to 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 redo a car like this um you, you're looking at an entry-level price of anywhere just every the prices for detailing are all over the place. You know, I know people that live in small towns where you just can't get a lot of money for a detail. And I know people that live in metropolitan areas that get super big bucks. But I would say an, a low, a low for an exterior detail only 
with coating. A low would be fifteen hundred bucks, and a high would be around three thousand. So you know, if you pick up a car like this, and it's going to have to be completely redetailed, just keep that in mind. That's the cost factor. Now, also think about this: if you go into the dealership the next day and go, you know, Jim. Well, sorry, Jim. I, I, I always use Jim as this the throwaway name. But since Eat that's the guy who knows the code, I need to be Bob. Okay, look, Bob, I got the car home last night and I noticed all these holograms. Um, here's the problem with taking it back to the dealership to get it fixed. So think about it. If they couldn't do it right the first time. Do you think they're going to do it right the second? Yeah, so here's the question I asked. If they couldn't do it right the first time, what's changed? Okay, did they got a new guy, a new tool, different chemicals, foam pads? What's changed? And the answer is probably nothing. So if nothing's changed, the same guy or someone else on the detailing team is going to take the same stuff and redo the car. You're just going to get the same problem. And probably a lot of, worse too. It, well, they're going to take off more, They're going to take off more paint needlessly. Okay. And then I know in the body shop world, I mean, I, I started typing about this problem back 20, 25 years ago. In a body shop, you know, they don't use any waxes or sealants or coatings. You can't use anything in a body shop that causes water beating or surface tension. So they use glazes like 3M Imperial hand glaze, Meguiar Show Car glaze. Oh, now Things you're dating have, yourself. Yeah, they got no silicone. They won't seal the paint. So what'll happen is they'll they'll fix the fender, they'll paint it, they'll sand it, they'll buff it. It's all hologrammed out. You take it back to the body shop and go, hey, you know, Bob, you did a great job of fixing it, but look at all these scratches in here. They're holograms. And they go, oh. Leave it here, we'll fix it. And then what they do is they put a glaze over it. You know, <laughs> it masks it, it hides it. You wash it a few times, the glaze washes off because it's not water, it's water soluble. And then you're back to the same problem. And, and again, it kind of goes back to look, if they couldn't do it right the first time, what's changed that they can do it right the second time? Nothing. Nothing. So that's where you need to let the, let the dealership know, hey, I'm taking this to an outside a detailer and you're paying for it. <laughs> I agree. But okay. it all starts with inspecting it before you take the keys and drive it home. You got to get it done right then and there. You know, and for the kind of money you're spending, have some tools with you. Have a scroll finder light. Have a baggie. Have a clean towel. You know, walk around and look at the wheels and tires. Check everything out. Okay. Um, just a quick question for you. Would this would be we're having maybe one of the ceramic coatings that are certified and actually are on Carfax. So that way you can say, hey, look, my car was this, that, and you did this, kind of like a proof. Well, that, that, you know, that's a good point. Now, if the dealership offers ceramic coatings and... No, 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 like you had it. You uh, had it done. Yeah, say, say I got that car, okay? Yeah. I brought it home, had my detailer yeah. do a coating and stuff. Then I take it to them to have the service job. Yeah. Then it turns out like that. Would that be something that you'd like to have in paper, either through a warranty? Of yes, the definitely. Yeah, if you could okay. back up your claims, anything you can back up with writing, you know, is going to help you to resolve that issue in your favor. Okay. So yeah, you bet. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Are you done with all your little? I'm, I'm kind of done. Yeah. Show? There wasn't a whole lot more to show. You know, the crayon trick. You know, the the you know get get this uh, get one of these tags. You, you know where this came from? I will take credit for the the do not wash hang tags that. G on and everybody in the world has now. But years ago, after I did that Mercedes Benz for that guy, um, I wrote an article. You can find it. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's called Don't Wash Car. <laughs> and I, what I did is I just took a, on my computer, I printed out, you know, eight and a half by 11 piece of printer paper that just said in huge block aerial bold letters, horizontal, don't wash car and I stuck them in all the windows and took the pictures and wrote the article and that's probably 15 years ago and nowadays you know everybody's got a hang tag out but I'm pretty sure that was the uh, the original source yeah, for that idea. I remember doing one at Geek. Yep. So, All right so with that <laughs> hi it's me your voice from the nether I'm gonna go through all your comments here looks like you guys have been busy over here in the comment section and like always if you have any ideas put them in the comments they read them we'll make a video about it and uh, you know let's let's roll so I'm gonna kick it back over here to Mike because you don't want to see my face uh, let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the star here uh, Camille let's go and <laughs> his profile picture is amazing it's like a an ordinary commuter looks like a Lantra or something like that with big old tractor tires sitting outside of it. That's pretty amazing. If that's your real car, <laughs> impressive. Uh, we have first one, Puerto Rico. Hello, Mike and Yancey. Puerto Rico, you're slipping. I'm seeing you in a couple different videos now. You're not the first one. I think everybody's onto your game. 
Uh, do, do, do. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Billy Beasley's, all right, this will be Victor. Welcome to this week's live class with Mike. We'll be taking your questions after this lesson, so get them in now. Yeah, uh, another yes. thing you can also do is most, most iPhones, smartphones have a uh, camera is when you find any kind of damage, as soon as you can, document it. Agree. Take a picture of it. It's all, all about, right. it's all about documenting pre-existing damage that you had no control over. All right, Tundra Whisperer, uh, hello all. Then we got our buddy up in Jacksonville. I called in sick just to be here today. Perfect shine of Jax. Oh, yeah, whatever, Russell. You probably weren't doing anything anyway. <laughs> oh, you got called out. <laughs> uh, by the way, also, this thing has what they call a black chrome grill, and it's completely scratched up. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how could anybody do that to a car? Would they take a Scotch Brite? Probably. And Probably, uh, well, they uh, gotta replace it. They uh, gotta a replace pad. the whole grill. I mean, not a pad, but a brush. Could be. Like a oh, scrub brush. It's bad. Okay, we have optical clarity detailing. Hey, Mike and Nancy, love these videos. Makes Wednesdays awesome. <laughs> Aww. Next week, right. we're gonna be uh, live yeah. at the big five day class in Chicago. And uh, we're gonna probably do a live broadcast on site. So during Wednesday, we'll break up whatever we're doing and do a little video up there. Oh, ah, my transmitter battery died. Okay, that's why that went out, because my battery just died on there. Uh, all right, so it's only you, Mike. Uh, Michael O'Neill, this is my buddy up north, way up north. Good afternoon, both of you. <laughs> Hopefully you're not freezing up there in Canada. Uh, let's go here. Aw, director of success. Woohoo! Wednesday is here. Now get to work, Chris. Hey, Chris. All right, do, 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 do. Oh, here, all right, here's the first real question coming in here. Optical clarity detailing. What would you charge for something like this size? Me personally? Yeah. Um, well, for this here, I'd be in the uh, twenty-five dollars to $3,000 range. Um, the thing about this here, uh, Yancey, can you do me a, oh, you're using it. So Yancey's got his equipment over there on what's called a Werner work platform. Uh, all you detailers know what I'm talking about. So here's the problem, uh, or the issue, I don't want to use the word problem, but look at this roof. It's as big as a school bus. So in order to tackle this car, just washing it, I spent three hours cleaning the wheels and tires, cleaning the barrel of the wheels, uh, washing it, then mechanically decontaminated all at the same time. So I got three hours in washing it, but when it comes to the roof, every time you want to get up and do something like wash it, rinse it, clay it, wipe it, you know, you've got to get up and down on your Warner work platform. Um, and that's just a time killer. It's just going up and down, up and down. So um, you got to factor that thing in. Same thing with tall SUVs. You know, people that buy these trucks, they love them. Well, of course they do. They're great. But, but they don't look at it through a detailer's eyes. Like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get up and down on a Warner work platform a thousand times just to knock out the roof. Same thing with large SUVs, you know. So, uh, I learned this from my friend as a body shop, and he, he, I says, you know, just give me some round numbers. If someone were to bring a car in and ask to have it painted, what would it cost? So he gave me a price, and he goes, but if it's an SUV or truck, the price goes up because we got to get up and down to manage the roof. They add in that. That's part yeah, of the so labor. that's when I started thinking about it. But yeah, you always want to charge more for anything tall. Okay, we have Daniel coming in here just in time. He must have got in right when we first started. Then we have Tundra Whisperer coming back in. First thing I say when I drop off for oil changes, do not wash, wash my truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny about a dealership, and you know, I've taken plenty of cars in. You can take your car in detailed to the nines. It looks beautiful, and they will still wash it. They, they don't look. The technicians don't look. The detailers look. They don't look. It's a knee jerk. They just tap. You just wash like the doing car. that action, I think. Wash the car. Wash the car, even though it doesn't need it. And then they scratch the hell out of it. And you know, one of the things we <laughs> talk a lot about, Yancey, is, is it takes hours to buff out a car. It takes seconds to put a scratch in because your, your wiping towels, your washing mitts, or your drying towels are contaminated. And at a dealership with the volume that they do, chances are really good, everything's contaminated. So okay. don't let wash your car. All right, we have Steve coming in here. Ask Mike to check his emails when he gets a chance. Reference GM truck interior protection. I, I can't watch entire live video, <laughs> but y'all are great, Steve. Yeah. I, I saw that email. Uh, sorry, I've been uh, writing a brand new article all day long, so I haven't got to it. I'll, I will get to you, I promise. Okay. Chop, chop. <laughs> all right, we have Daniel. This one's a long one, okay. okay? Same thing happened to me with a brand new, at the time, 2022 Mercedes EQS 580. 
Machine polished applied G Technics five year ceramic coating. Three months later, lady had to take it in for me for maintenance, and their so called detailers absolutely scratched the beep out of it. Don't think they'll do that again. I charge. I charged eleven $1 hundred dollars to fix their problem and reapply the five-year ceramic coating. Yeah, it's common. It it's, happens. It's, you know, and, and look, look. Uh, I, I got friends that sell cars. I, I get it. Uh, there's a huge difference between physical labor, like digging a ditch, building a house, putting up drywall, and having a nice suit and tie and a little cubicle. You talk about all the things with cars, and then you get the person in to sign on the form. There's not a lot of labor in there. You're not gonna get all sweaty and dirty. So I get it, some people are attracted to that kind of job. But those type of people, they don't seem to be the kind of people that can see swirls in paint, okay? So they just don't care. It's just, it's not their thing. But you know, for people that are watching this kind of video, you buy something nice, you wanna keep it nice, and it should be nice when you buy it. I agree, I uh, totally agree. All right, let's come in here, Doug. Uh, good afternoon, been looking forward to this all week. You know, I'm glad people are like setting their <laughs> little timers around us. I, I, that makes me feel like we're doing something good here. Um, yes, Tundra, you saw it, the, the truck was horrendous. All right, let's go here, Bob Massimino. Hey, Bobby. Uh, wow, what a mess. <laughs> yeah, it was. And it doesn't have to be like this, it, no. again. Wherever this took place, and it wasn't here in Stewart, it was purchased out of state. Um, and I know the place, I don't want to say nothing bad about anybody, but the dealerships just don't put any money into training or tools that's or a high turnover rate it, over it, there. That's right, because the turnover rate for a detail or a, detail, de a dealership is about three months. So what happens is they hire a new guy, someone kind of shows them the ropes, they start doing it, and then all of a sudden the guy figures out, hey, I can go do this on my own and keep all the money. Yeah. <laughs> so they leave, and they give it another guy. So I, I want to share a little quick story. Uh, when I was at McGuire's out in Irvine, California, McGuire's tried a pilot program with Mercedes-Benz and BMW. McGuire's staff went in and set them all up with training, uh, clean pads, clean towels, great products, the right tools, and then each week went back and managed their towels and their pads and their chemicals, make sure everything was good, and they still couldn't turn out a decent looking car, and the program completely blew up. It just, you cannot fix the dealership you know, no, not unless you actually I, have the drive to actually make sure you put out good and, stuff. And actually, I've got some friends that work at dealerships that they are the detailer and they're the kind of people that hang out on Facebook groups and detailing forums and take classes and they actually know what they're doing. They're confined with the amount of time and the stuff that they'll buy, but some of them will even buy their own stuff and take it in to detail the dealership's cars because they take pride in their work. Okay, we have Bob coming back on here again. Don't diso me. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good one. Me. Okay, Ron, I let I missed the first 24 minutes. We had a bit we had a bride power outage. A uh -oh. bride. Well, let's start over from the beginning. Okay. My name's Mike. Rewind. Hi. <laughs> uh, let's, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be Yeah, on YouTube. you can you can go back Watch and replay. The whole thing. Yeah. Michael O'Neill, glaze is like makeup on an old lady when it's off you run away. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I'm going to have to say that from now on. Okay, Kyle, he's coming in. Hey, all. Oh, okay. Here's the next little question for you. What blue pad was used? That's coming from James. Oh, this is a Lake Country HDO, so heavy duty orbital. Um, they make a SDO, which is a standard duty. And the difference of the HDO pad is it has this stiffer gray foam. Uh, layer here, uh, which kind of siphons up the pad. I guess it has to do with the long, for basically it's been for long stroke polishers to keep that pad, you know, in its condition, in its state as it's doing that radical oscillation. Okay. Uh, but it works good. It's it's not a super aggressive, um, but uh, but it's a good general purpose man. Thing works on just dang, dang near any paint system. Okay. Let's go here. Doug's coming in with a question. I do have a question. Can you use a ceramic coating on a convertible window? Uh, yeah, well, it depends. Yeah, I, I always have to say, it depends on the coating, but uh, a couple weeks ago, um, uh, I did a complete dry sand cut and buff to the plastic window on a convertible Corvette hardtop, and when I was done, I put the MX coating on both sides. I sanded both the inside and the outside. You can find that video up on our YouTube channel. 
And actually, as of today, I found out I got another 1960 Corvette coming in because the guy that owns this Corvette saw the back wind on the Corvette I just sanded and buffed. And now he's going to bring me his Corvette so I can pull his top off and sand and buff the window. Oh, window. look at you. You become yeah. the, the window, window whisperer. This will be the sixth one I've done in my life. So. Okay, let's go here. Stephen Valentine. See ya next week in Chicago. Right on. Looking forward to it. All right, we have Perfect Shine coming again. Most trucks travel by rail and are covered with brake dust when they reach the dealer. Very true. Remember when I got my Hellcat, how bad it was when I yeah. first brought it into the shop? Yeah, and look, it's not the dealership's fault. That's just the nature of, you know, uh, trucking and shipping, yep. uh, transporting. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you should, a, a person should expect it, be willing to either uh, inspect it before they buy it and then if it is contaminated, see what the dealership can offer to fix it, you know, because it is their car brand new. Um, but if, but I tell you, a lot of times you're going to be better off just to take it home and do it yourself. Okay. We have Ron coming in here. The only time my vehicles go to the dealership is for warranty work. And I make yep. darn sure that the service writer puts, do not wash all capital letters on the work order. That's right. You've got it. you got to stress it. Otherwise, it'll happen. Okay. Kyle coming in here. Sure can, <laughs> Doug. Just match the coating to the type of window. Glass equals glass coating. Polycarbonate headlight coating. Yes. So that's somebody else answering that. Then we have Tundra coming in. Would you, would a Euro 5050 pad used with the 150 compound get results in, on this truck too? Thanks. Well, the problem, anytime you're using a fiber pad, so the Euro fiber pad, uh, uh, Rupes microfiber pad, Meguiar's micro, anything with a fiber, Okay, so like I know the whole background story behind um, uh, microfiber pads. McGuire's invented them for use at the OEM level. And then they introduced them to the detailing world to try to get people to stop using these and put swirls in cars. And the only way they could get more cut power out of something like a Porter Cable was to get to a fiber pad instead of a foam pad. So foam pad has a uniform surface texture, therefore it's not as aggressive. Fiber pads, and I know this is a wool pad on a rotary, but I, I could grab a Euro fiber pad. Same thing, you got these fibers, they are, uh, they're an abrasive. So, so here's the deal. This actually has pretty hard paint from my experience. Um, I could probably finish, cut and finish with a Eurofiber pad, but I'd want to do a test spot first and look for micromarring caused by the fibers. I am not a big fan of microfiber pads for the kind of detailing work I do. If I got a cut, I just get in and get it over with, but I always finish out with foam on an orbital. Then I don't have to worry about holograms showing up down the road. Okay, we have Mikey coming in here. I have a vehicle with matte paint. Matte paint, remember that. <laughs> yes. There are some water spots on the hood. What is the best method to remove? Yeah, the this least, is a hot topic out on the interwebs. Yeah, the least aggressive method. So the, the problem with matte is you can't rub anything on it because it'll start to shine it up. Um, so, uh, you know, the best thing to do is pick a reputable brand and see what, like here at Dr. Beasley's, we make, we make uh, products for matte finishes, including something to clean the mat and hopefully take the water spots off. But it just depends on the kind of water spot. You know, there's multiple kinds of water spots. Years ago, I wrote this article, type one, type two, type three water spots. Type one is mineral deposits that were in the water that after the water dries, they left on your car and those usually wash off. Type two is an imprint ring. Whatever's in the water is so corrosive, it actually puts a little etched it's ring yeah. wherever the drops dried. And then of course, type three is called a crater etching where it actually put a little crater in the paint where it ate through the paint and type four is a stain mm, in the acid paint. Rain. But there's four different types of water spots so it just depends on what you have. And the sad thing is is our, our water nowadays is so contaminated that it's really an unavoidable problem. Okay, uh, let's move on. We just got a couple more in here. We have Michael coming in here. Uh, hey Mike, what would you, uh, blah, blah, blah. what did you get for readings on a paint gauge for that truck? I've uh, been seeing GM and Chevy 2023 with five mils, so they are definitely getting thinner and saving money at the factory. Yeah, I, I, I did take paint reading uh, on this, and I was finding anywhere between four and six, just depends on where I checked. But for, for me, knowing this has been, a, it's a new car or new truck, factory finish, my concern wasn't going through the clear because I use good stuff, good pads, the right tool for the job, good technique. So I wasn't too concerned about if the, there's enough paint. My job was to fix it. And then, of course, we used it for a, a live broadcast this week. Okay. Um, this is 
Doug coming back in. I don't think he quite understood what we were saying. I did see the video, but I meant the one flexible convertible windows in a soft top, and that's where you. Oh yeah, on you know on the flexible windows on a soft top. Okay, so recently I did a 1964 Amphicar, car, and that blog article is up on the Dr. Beasley website. I actually took a rotary with this pad and machine compounded both sides of that flexible window then I finished out with this pad and this pad and different tools and different products came out like a piece of glass and when I was all done I actually just used the Dr. Beasley's paint coating builder on there and and it clarified it it, it just made it totally clear very slippery and then I stopped okay. so I, uh, for me that's that's a that's a museum car it's not gonna see any wear and tear so there was for me there was no reason to put anything more on it than that but um, Offhand, I don't know of any ceramic coatings for flexible, clear plastic windows. Like Just because of the flex, so you crack it? Yeah, like you find on a Jeep or like Isinglass, you find on a canvas surround on a center console. But I don't know of it. There might be some, but you could do some research on that. Okay. But, but just going with this, I mean, it looked good. And that's okay. something you can apply and wipe off as needed. All right, we have a comment coming in here, one of the last ones. We're about ready to come up on an hour here. Uh, this is from Instagram, detailing for per perfection. Does NSP have a time limit as to when to apply a ceramic coating? Uh, no, you can apply the ceramic coating after you've wiped off any NSP residue like I just did here. Okay. No, I mean, normally if you're buffing out a car, you're going to be buffing out the whole car, then coating the whole car. So, you know, um, I always practice this thing called follow my path of travel. So I did the roof first, polished it and then I coated it. And then I moved down and started on the hood. So following your path to travel means I, when I put the coating on, I went to the roof, then I went to the hood, then I went to the vertical panels. So I followed my path to travel. But there is no like waiting time after a wipe off before you can do the next step. Okay, all right, uh, we have Neil coming in here. I know I'm late. <sighs> Darn it, Neil, <laughs> we've been waiting for you. I know I'm late, but uh, it is always a treat to listen to Yancey. Good no, we said Mike and Yancey. <laughs> I'll see how long it took you to get on that. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, Eugenio Hernandez Torres Gino. Uh, he has four names. I had to do it because he had four names. Uh, greetings to everyone from Puerto Rico. In my case, the dealers supposedly offer you ceramic treatments that in one day they deliver the car, then they come to you to ask. Then they... Then they come to you to ask. Ask what? I don't get it. I don't, I, I'm, if you can clarify yeah. a little bit so, on that. So, you know, um, the problem with, again, with dealerships is cer the word ceramic and the word graphene, those are like buzzwords now. And everybody's plastering them all over on their labels because the masses, the unwashed masses, they just, they don't know. And it, it could be a, de you know, like I've seen uh, car washes with spray on ceramic is the final process of a tunnel wash. Is it really a ceramic? Is it really bonding? So be careful of anything that's offered um, from a dealership, especially at a low price. Okay, last one. Price. We have Ron coming in here one last time. If there were, not we, if there were college degrees for detailing, Mike would have a PhD. A doctorate Aww. in detailing. Dun, okay. dun, you know, dun, someone dun. actually posted something like that on the old Geek Forum probably 10 years ago. Said that uh, that uh, just you know I've written seven books. Um, I've probably forgotten most of the stuff I've learned, <laughs> but that's what the the topic they posted. No, that's called old age, Mike. They should say I get a doctorate in detailing. Okay, so I go to a dealership from now on, which I already do this anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna hang this. Yeah, save your paint, save your hard work. Yep. Don't get angry, right? This is your style, right? All right, there's my style. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you. We had a full house in there tonight. And uh, like I said, I appreciate you. They appreciate you. Helps with the analytics and also with the algorithms. And plus, if you can, put a like, put a follow, share. If you missed some of this, go back and watch it again. If you really liked it, you can go back and watch it a hundred times. I'm not <laughs> gonna argue with you. I don't think they're gonna argue with you. Yeah. But always, if you do have any comments or questions or you have any ideas for videos, just put it down in the comments down below. And now, I have been patiently waiting since I've been on the other side about announcement at the end. So, oh, announcement uh, at the end. Coming up at the first weekend of May, you know, for the last 15 years, I've always taught 
my big three-day classes the same time every year because there's actually a science to picking out dates that don't conflict with holidays and other things. And uh, you so looked at a calendar. Yeah, I looked at a calendar. Well, it's still kind of tricky, you know. And um, like, you don't want to schedule a, a detailing class during Super Bowl or you know St. Patrick's Day or Easter or Cinco de Mayo because you know people do things. They have families going to celebrate. Uh, but anyway, so I teach these at the same time. There's one in February, one in May, and September, and we've also added one in November after SEMA. Uh, but I have one coming up the the first week in May, so May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It's a three-day class, and that boat that's back there is one of the boats that'll be here for the boat day. So. So the first day is all paint correction. I teach three different styles of detailing to match the packages you should be offering your customer. Or if you're an enthusiast, the three different types of detailing you need for the different kinds of cars. So it all has impact. Mm -hmm. The next day I bring in cool cars for this class. I got a 1981 Corvette, black paint, fresh paint, loss of orange peel. And I got a 1931 Model A street rod going into the paint booth this week or next week for a fresh red paint job. They'll See, be that one's a nice one. They'll be here for the Saturday class on how to dry sand by hand, dry sand by machine, use rotary polishers, ceramic coats. So very intense, no chairs, no sitting. They start at 7.30 on Friday and Saturday. On Sunday, I become a nice guy. I let you come in at 8.30 and we start <laughs> sanding down boats. So nice. And I got a 21 foot sea hunt coming in for this. Uh, it's uh, called the Ultra Blue. And I've got this 1966 uh, duo runabout back here. So you're you gonna get a- in the beginning of the video. Yeah, you're gonna get a chance to work on um, two different boats for this three day class coming up. And this is the first time I've brought in a classic boat for strangers to work on some other dude's, you know, prized possession. So it's gonna be a really good class. Is it? Yeah, and you can go to drbeasley.com <laughs> to get signed up for that. If you got any questions, give me a call 760-515-0444. Always happy to answer and questions. And make sure you sign up quickly because the spots do fill up and they fill up quick. So if you want to reserve your spot, if you can't do yeah. the May, sign up for the later. All, all the so, classes are up there now, right? Yeah, they're all up there. Yeah, so if you can't make May, book your spot for the lighter yeah, ones because they do fill up. And then we he gets the phone call like, hey, I need to get in. Then we're like, yeah, so. I actually posted, uh, I always share the cars and boats that you're going to train on on my own forum, the MikePhillipsForum.com. Because for me, this is how I think, if I'm going to pay to go to a detailing class, a detailing class, I want to see what I get to work on. I don't see anybody else in the industry do this. I've been doing it for probably 20 years now. But right now on my forum, I just added the pictures of a Robalo, a 24-foot Robalo center console, blue, totally oxidized. That'll be here for the September class. But keep that in mind. I always show pictures of the things you're going to train on. And the after of during the class. But before you pay for the class, so you know what you get to work on. And you've been to a bunch of these. There's any sitting? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, no city. There's no city. It's all work, isn't it? Yeah, I don't it's know. How, I don't know how many classes we've actually did together, but Lots. I mean it's yeah. you you once you start you are off to the races and yeah. Sunday when you finish is when you actually get a rest. So yeah. by the way, one of the cars for the May class is something I've never worked on. It's a nineteen forty one Graham Hollywood in gold. And we're gonna take the three M Trizac system and we're going to machine sand it then buff it out and that's the first car you'll work on friday morning so pretty oh. cool all right so with that being said i'm going to go over here mike you're going to play with your crayons <laughs> and will you draw me a nice sunny picture of florida i will draw you a picture of an orange all right what do you say mike goodbye thanks for joining us